Well, hello there and welcome back to a brand new video where today, once again, we're talking about rugby. You guys seem to really enjoy these type of videos. So even though I post like rugby gameplay videos, a lot of you guys do enjoy like, the rugby content in terms of talking outside the video games and talking about rugby in the day-to-day -day fact of what's going on in the rugby world. Now, as of right now, rugby is pretty interesting, like any sport really, especially with the virus being spread, a lot of games have been cancelled. I think this week coming up is very important because I think tomorrow or Thursday, one of the days, a Premiership Rugby in the UK could be suspended up to 12 weeks which is very interesting. We don't know as of yet regarding Europe, so the Challenge Cup or the Championship Cup. It's, I mean, to us, this Premiership season, it's almost not pointless, but it's, it's, there's, there's a, obviously a, a sense, a sense. There's definitely a point to play, especially for who's going to win the Premiership, but there's not really any point in playing uh, for the relegation because we all know that Saracens have uh, been relegated already. But it's the same as football. People don't know what to do. Will the season suspend? I mean, obviously the season will suspend, but will the season ever resume or will they void the season? I, it's very, very chaotic right now. It's very interesting and see what will happen but next week is the biggest week I think in sporting almost I would say sporting history but it could be up there because we've got the Euros for football I know we're talking about football quickly and this is mainly a rugby video but for football we've got Euros 2020 which is happening I think in June I think and that could be postponed till next year. That, that's mad. The Premier League is suspended. The Champions League is suspended. Rugby is suspended. The London Marathon is suspended. Now, the reason why I'm talking about today's video, as of right now, no one's really playing. And they thought, hey, let's talk about other things regarding rugby. So news articles can get clicks. People don't get bored and you know, get entertained by some type of news. And this week, or the last few days, what's been building up, is the fact that Maratoji has been offered a seven-figure deal to join Racing 92 on a loan deal from Saracens and a lot of the RFU clubs have gone yeah you know why not he can but he won't be able to play for England because as of right now the uh, the RFU have a policy in place if you want to play for your English national team then you actually have to play for an English club now different nations have different policies so I, th so I think for Wales had something similar but for example Nick Tompkins he plays for Saracens in the English Premiership but is selected for Wales. I think Ireland do something similar. I think like Australia do as well. But I think there are a few exceptions. But with the English national team, pretty much if you want to play for England, you have to play for an English club. It's like with Chris Ashton. Chris Ashton was, uh, you know, a ve I mean, he still is a very, very top player, but he has been banned a few times. And the RFU or England rugby have kind of gone like, ah, oh, we've given him some games, but they don't always give him the games he wants. And I think there was a phase, I think, was it last year he went to? Was it two? on or to lose he knew he wasn't going to be selected for any english rugby games anymore and felt like you know hey why not why don't i move to france because to be honest everyone knows if you play for france you are well i want to say play for france you're playing for like a france a france a france a france when you play for a french club you are everyone knows you get paid a lot of money and at maratoji has been offered a much bigger salary than he is currently right now at saracens but to play for racing 92 on a loan deal and a lot of people are going well why are we giving him an exception you know Eddie Jones and the RFU themselves are kind of like on board because they really want you know you think that Saracens have a lot of English players and they really want those guys who keep performing at a high level not in the championship but the RFU clubs have gone well why are we making it an exception you know you know if you want to play for England you have to play for an English club and that does kind of open the doors and like spread the flood for a lot of other players going you know what I might leave my current team if I can play for England but in a different club in a different country and this club is offering me way more money than I'm currently on then why not right but I don't know today's video is kind of talking about I really want to know what you guys think right so like let me know in the comments guys down below right now should you play for a club within your nationality to play for your national team so for example to play for Ireland you have to play for an Irish team play for Wales you have to play in the Welsh team play for England you have to play in an English team now my thoughts is I don't see why we're so restrictive on that because if you think about it English league very good league 
third, the Liga, the Liga, the Liga is not football, man. The top 14 is a very solid league, very strong. Like whenever Saracens or any English club plays a French side, the guys are like almost twice the size. They're big boys, big lads, and they're very strong powerhouse. The French know what to do. Their fitness is very different. The amount of food those guys eat. But whenever you play France, a national team, or a French club, those guys are just naturally bigger. Just just how it is, really. So in my opinion, is if Maratoji wants to go to France and he can play at that high level, that high intensity, then it benefits him, right? It benefits his, his growth, his, you know, his ability to grow and all that fun stuff. But at the same time, like if England are going to get a better Atoji, right now Atoji is one of England's best players, probably like, I don't know, top six, top five. He's always guaranteed a starting 15 position. But for England point of view, I mean, why not? I mean, if we're able to have some of our players play in some of the toughest league and get better and better, it's going to benefit the national team. Whereas in the Premiership, yeah, like the Premiership is great, but you're not playing against big boys, big lads all the time. Like I'm sure Chris Ashton, when he went from the Premiership to the top 14, Fair enough. Obviously a big difference. But when he came back and obviously joined Sale and now he's actually joined Harlequins after a bit of disagreement, you know, he's a bigger player. Like you have to be a bigger player and get stronger, be faster. And, you know, I don't see why, but a lot of people are going, to be honest, you know, you really should play for an English club to play for an English team. But isn't that a bit old? Like, we're now moving on. Because if you think about it, rugby's one of those sports where, yeah, you know, you don't make the most money. It's not a sport which has a lot of investment. But, I mean, when you retire, what are you really going to do as a job? You know, unless you've been very sensible with your money. Yeah, some people are a presenter for BT Sports, Sky Sports, BBC, ITV or whatever. But most rugby players don't really have the post support. Now, if I was a Toji and I'm like, yo, I can make a million pounds in a year. Why not? Like, let the guy make as much money as he can. Because after rugby, he doesn't really have to worry so much about finances. And isn't that what we really want? We really want our players to have the, you know, the post freedom of not having to worry about, like, finances? I mean, I don't know. I, I'm just really intrigued to see what you guys think. Because I think that if a player wants to move to a different country and performs at a very top level, then why not get selected for the national team? Like in football, for example, obviously in the China League, a lot of like, say, oldish, oldish players, oldish a word, some of like the more senior players who are still pretty good, but will make a ton of money in China. Fair enough, the Chinese League isn't the most strongest league, so being selected in that league for the national team maybe makes sense that you won't be selected because the competition isn't that good. But we're talking about the top 14. I mean, if you think if a player went to the Pro 14 or the top 14, those leagues are very, very tough. I mean, English clubs alone have seen this, right? When they play in the Championship Cup or the Challenge Cup, do England do well? I mean, sometimes they do. I mean, Saracens have been doing well. Exeter have been slowly getting better and better. But realistically, who do you normally see in the final? You see Leinster, you see Toulon, you see Racing 92. And obviously I've been seeing Saracens, and hence why Saracens have, you know, that's why we have so many high caliber players. And unfortunately we have broken the salary cap, but we had to kind of break the salary cap to compete with the likes of Leinster, Munster, Racing 92, Toulon, Toulouse. So yeah, I don't see why, but I wanted to do this video, A, because I wanted your, your guys' feedback really, and just wanted to know what you guys really think. And for me, let him go. Let a Toji go. I mean, if I was a Toji and let's say the RFU go, yes, if you want to play for England, you have to play for an English club. I mean, do I skip a year? I mean, regarding internationals next year, yeah, we have the Six Nations, which for me, yeah, it's, it, it's a pretty good competition, but it's not the World Cup, is it? And it's not the Lions Tour. The Lions Tour is next year. And, you know, a Toji will still be selected because you're not playing for England. You're playing for the Lions. So... You know, I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. I'm really intrigued by it. Should we, like, scrap the policy and let the RFU and, you know, whoever's managing England to select whoever he wants? Because, realistically, at the end of the day, we want the best players possible playing for the national team, regardless if they're playing for an English club. I'm just, I don't know. I'm kind of passionate about it. I mean, if a rugby player wants to make more money elsewhere, but still plays for the national team, I see no harm in us all. I just feel like other clubs or other players are maybe a bit jealous because they're not being selected by Racing or Toulouse or making money. At the end of the day, 
rugby is a business. It used to be a sport, it still is classed as a sport, but to be honest, rugby is a business. You make money, and if you want to make more money, you might have to go elsewhere. I think there was a player recently announced by Exeter that he's leaving them to go to sale. Why would you leave Exeter to go to sale unless it was for money? Because Exeter are very top side. Like, they're a big side, winning a lot of things, heading in the right direction. But the player might have gone, you know what? I don't know how much the guy's getting paid, but Sale might have been like, mate, join us, double your pay. Why not? Honestly, I don't get it. Rugby's a business, it is a sport, but realistically, it is a business. It is all about money at the end of the day. But anyway, there we go. Let me know what you guys think and all that fun stuff. But if you have enjoyed today's video, then be sure to massive thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new. Comment down below for us regarding this. But anyway, you guys have a wonderful day. And as we'll in my next video. Adios, chaps.